Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. It's of a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding very dark earwax. So when earwax becomes dark in colour, uh, this is almost pitch black in colour the deeper we go into the ear. It means the earwax is it's typically it's been in there for a long, long time, it's oxidised. So if you think about an apple or avocado, as you cut into it, uh, because it becomes the flesh becomes exposed to oxygen, it oxidizes and it can slowly turn black. Hence why quite often if you're uh, preparing apples or an avocado, you'd put it in a, a bowl of water with some acid, some lemon juice, for example, to stop the oxidati oxidization process. Now, the patient had also been using Q-tips, uh, what we call cotton buds in the UK, and have really, really impacted the wax really deep in the ear. They were very anxious upon attending uh, that I think, they had a bad experience elsewhere in the past and hence probably why they've left this so long on this occasion because um, they were very reluctant to have their ears de-waxed. Um, you can see the view that we've got. We've got a really wide field of view with the, the eye clear scope, our wireless endoscope. And this last part of wax is really against the eardrum here. It's lodged in the isthmus. An isthmus is a narrowing um it's a generic term actually, so you just you just it's not exclusive to just the ear, but in the ear canal itself you have two narrowings. The first narrowing is where the cartilaginous um, um portion of the ear canal, so the outer third meets the inner two thirds of the ear canal, the bony part, also known as the osseo cartilaginous juncture. So we get a narrowing there, so that's about a centimeter into the ear canal, and we have a second narrowing about half a centimeter away from the eardrum, and the ear canal narrows and then protrudes back out wide with, um, sideways again and outwards. So the ear is clear, just some residual wax on the posterior canal wall. Um, it's matted, you can see the hair strands there, and that's another indication for me that the patient's been using Q tips, pushing these loose hairs into the ear. It just got a bit smeary as we went in because some of this, the patient had been using some olive oil drops prior to attending but the eardrum is nice and clear. This is the patient's left ear. You can see the cilia, so we know we're at the entrance or near about the entrance. Uh, this is some dead keratin that's enveloped around the plug of wax. I've just removed that. You can see a tail of keratin there. This is from the anterior canal wall. You can see it's on the left-hand side. So the patient had been using drops for a while in the hope that the drops itself would dislodge the wax. The reality is once you've got a substantial amount of earwax in the ear, the drops is not going to remove the wax. It will help soften it, but it won't remove it. So it's a bit of a myth. Quite often we have patients who attend who have seen their local nurse or GP who's just advise them to continuously use drops week after week in the hope it will uh, it will help it to come out. But it doesn't. It can actually exacerbate your symptoms. So just this remaining wax superiorly on the eardrum, just going to remove that. So if you over oil your ear or over use other types of drops, like certainly by carbon to hydrogen peroxide, the wax actually absorbs the drops and expands and swells. The little speck of wax just on the hammer bone, I'm going to leave that because it's on the hammer bone and the patient, as I said, was a bit anxious. So we just leave that. It's not going to improve their symptoms. That's all the contents from the ear. You can see just how dark that ear wax is. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys.